I'm democratic. Well. Where are the others at the table? You don't impose democracy. I said, and you know, the last time this happened, in 1896, I believe, the scramble for Africa, the last time this happened at the Berlin Conference, Africa was divided up. I yep. said, is this what is happening? Um, my comments were not received well, but the point is, it lets you know what people are thinking. Now, the last incident I had was just maybe three, two and a half weeks ago. I was in Zambia, and there was this big bruha about a project approach to development versus a sector approach. You know, you, you have a project and you're doing it. A sector approach is you're looking at the whole sector, but you pool the monies and then decide where to go. Well, in this particular instance, the European powers had all signed this, this MOU where they were putting their power, all of their money in a pot, and then they would decide to go here or go there. The U.S. hadn't put its money in the pot because, you know, um, the attitude of the Congress is nobody tells us what to do. You know, we're going to go it alone. And I was over there with a project from the Mississippi Consortium, and they were saying, you all have to be careful. We don't want you to get involved in any of this. But they were putting us in the middle. Yeah. I started looking at this, and there was another black guy who was there. And we came to the same conclusion, said the same to people at different times. The way they were organizing this sector pool, it was collective imperialism. Mm -hmm. They were going to put their money there. And then they would decide which projects to fund in education, in finance, and in the other places, which means they would direct the course of development in those countries. So that's right, exactly. It happens everywhere. So the point I'm making is if you don't have control of the distribution of resources, if they are not your resources, you are not independent and you are not doing something on your own. You are a hired hand. And the vision that the economic group had was of a pan-African world where we controlled our finances, our money, where we pooled these resources and made decisions jointly, where we controlled security, we controlled communications, we control real estate and, of course, distribution. That's what the Economic Committee wanted. Now, we know that we can't sit and design that kind of an organization overnight. So everybody, they gave me their telephone numbers and those who had email addresses gave them to me. And we're supposed to meet and we'll report back to this august body about what it is we think we're going to look at different models and see what works. We're going to talk with people who are doing things in Africa in economic development and see how they're doing it. And I just happen to have a house guest who's with us right now, who is involved in advising, consulting with African Americans who are doing development in a big way in African countries. And I'm going to impose upon him and ask him to come and share with you, members of the committee and the rest of you, examples of the kinds of things that African Americans can do and are doing with their money in Africa. His name is Doug Shad. Doug? Greetings, brother. Um, I'm working with a company out of Orlando, uh, Vermont, and we're in Ghana, um, in Tima, in the Freeport Trade Zone. We're constructing a spice processing facility that's for um, peppercorns, uh, cloves, most seed types of uh, products, some pharmaceutical type products like uh, graphonia and boracanga. 
Um, we dry the spice, we clean the spice, we sort the spice, and we rake the spice. Um, it's a $2 million investment. It, the facility is designed to produce when it's fully running at uh, capacity, 5,000 pounds an hour. Um, and probably the most significant issue is that African American owned the name of the company in Ghana is uh, African American Trading Company. It's an African company that's there, it's called Afrique Tradex. Um, probably the most significant portion of what we're doing, we think, and we see is that we will be able to compete um, because we're approaching it with the, the state of the art technology. We'll be able to uh, do the value added, whereas before, when Africans trade, um, they hardly know what they're going to get in terms of a price because they'll be told that, well, this product is, is adulterated uh, or it's not of standard. Well, we have all of that technology and we bring all of that know-how to the table so that we're going to achieve that kind of level. And we'd like to see more people there doing the same type of things. Please, at the same time, now I would like you to give Mama Shelby Lewis some more love. Give her some love! The great African woman, Queen Mama Shelby Lewis. Sister has been on this path, this Pan-African path, for a long time, serving African people. At this time, if you have anything for Brother Charles Barron, please just raise your hand, Sister will come to you at this time. And, uh, and quickly, so if you would like uh, some literature, just raise your hand and before we just put some in your hand as well.